me some jewels. Let me get this. Come on. I mean, Don't be went shy. To, went, to, went to Lincoln Senior High School. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how come St. Louis does, didn't have a chapter? So, yep, dim that one down. St. Louis, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. St. Louis, down, we more. struggled. Now we struggled in St. Louis. Right St. Louis was, was more pro inclined to uh, the Nation of Islam, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. And, and uh, do you remember the Black Liberators? Mm, that may have been before my time. Okay. <laughs> do you know about Charles, Dr. The Reverend Charles Cohen? Mm -mm. You never heard of Charles Cohen? Tell us. Okay. okay. Uh, what was it in the early, maybe the mid-60s after the Black Panther Party started, uh, Charles Corn got together and they, they wanted to, to form a group like that. Mm -hmm. They called themselves the Black Liberators. They went out and got a, a car and everything to, to patrol the police like they was doing in California. St. Louis police wasn't going for it. What they did was they, they whipped up on Charles Corn. Matter of fact, they almost killed him. They had him in intensive care and everything. And, and uh, basically ran him. He was run out of St. Louis and came over to East St. Louis, where he stayed for a while, and they started this group called the United Front. Then it went south to Cairo, where, where he, he continued his struggle up until when they, they put him in jail, and he just died this past summer. Mm. So, yeah. But Google wow. him when you get a chance. Google him when yeah, I get a Charles chance. Cohen, yeah. Charles Cohen. Yeah, okay. he did a lot of work with the Black sure Panther Party, fought the Klan in, uh, in, in Cairo for many years. Clan and Nazis, because they, yep. they, 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 there was a project down there called the uh, uh, Pyramid Project. Mm -hmm. And it, it was set by the railroad, railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. They used to, they, the Klan would go into those open box cars and they would shoot in, into the, uh, the Pyramid Project. project yeah. mm -hmm. And the, the uh, Black Panther Party's uh, office uh, uh, in Cairo. They would go down there sometime to, to patrol and try to help out as best they could. Matter of fact, they even gave some some some, uh, some of uh, sec uh, security to Charles Corn at times when they could. Uh, but and there was a lot of food drafts here from the, the, the chapter headquarters in Chicago. They were sent they sent food and stuff down. Set of mm -hmm. speaking engagements right. and stuff for the sort of revenue in order to try to raise funds, to continue the struggle in the right. southern part of the state. A lot of history. A lot of history. Which a lot of people don't know about. Yeah, when you uh, t when you mentioned the Black Panther Party in St. Louis, one of the first questions people have is like, why was there never a national chapter? There was there was now, in, in the state of Missouri, mm -hmm. there was a office at one time in Kansas City. Okay. Uh, and the brother was uh, Pete O'Neill. If I remember correctly, yeah. Yeah. And Pete O'Neill was uh, basically run out out of the country. You know, mm -hmm. but afterwards, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Afterwards, the closest thing that, that came was in East St. Louis because at the time in '70 and '71, mm -hmm. you had people actually in St. Louis, Missouri, and people that was in East St. Louis. It, they were both competing, trying to open up an office in either either side of, of the of the river at the time. Mm -hmm. But we could never, we could never get an establishment in St. Louis. Uh, we had we got to run around when it came to, to you know, getting offices or getting built. Mm -hmm. It was it was it was a, a really a struggle because you know St. Louis is one of those type of towns that it was controlled by the by the uh, diocese Catholics. Mm -hmm. They can, when I say controlled, I never understood when I used to hear about censorship in movies, mm -hmm. how stuff, they, they actually cut stuff out of the movies, which I didn't know until I came to Chicago, mm -hmm. and I would you know, go downtown to the movies, and I'm, I'm looking at, at these, I'm saying, I didn't see that in St. Louis, they cut, they cut all that out. Downtown there, when it got dark, everything was closed, I mean, they controlled everything in, uh, in, in uh, St. Louis. And they had this thing called the uh, St. Louis Metropolitan Police. Mm -hmm. As long as they could see you, they could chase you. It didn't matter if you're going to another state. It didn't matter. And this is what they were doing. And also, they, from time to time, the St. Louis police would come over to East St. Louis, call itself looking for people to arrest and, and take them back over. Uh, you, you know, I don't know how the bus service is now. You know, the buses would mm -hmm. run across the rivers after maybe like about 7 o'clock or something. I don't know mm -hmm. if it still does that or not. So, you know, they, they really had a control on, 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 on the city. They still have and, it on the And, and the, uh, most of the, the blacks who, who thought or pretended to be revolutionary, I'll put it like that, mm -hmm. these guys were more inclined to, to uh, what we used to call cultural nationalism. Mm -hmm. if, uh, 
they didn't even like white paper. You know, this this how it was, and, and by us uh, 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 not being racist I and mean, working with coalitions with mm-hmm. other groups, uh, whites and Hispanics, they did not like that. So it was it was a struggle. But when we got our office, we got our office in East St. Louis. But we was also able to to uh, have support from St. Louis. Mm-hmm. From uh, we had a couple breakfast programs over there. We mm-hmm. had a group of uh, the uh, inner community survival committees. Some whites was on the south side of St. Louis. Mm-hmm. Uh, they worked in that community over there. And basically, we closed our office in '73 because we got we got. Uh, uh, Orders from Central. So he was going to make the big push out in Oakland, so mm-hmm. we started closing up the chapels and ranches. And that they told us to come to Chicago, and in Chicago, some people went out to California. Okay. Wow, that's a lot of history. Oh, a lot of history in this last five minutes. I appreciate it. <laughs> that's roughly. That's roughly. Roughly. That's roughly. Yeah. yeah roughly but, about what? About a three or four year condensed. Just condensed in a few words. Yeah, but it's it's more than we have in St. Louis. So I'm, oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to. Sharing this and, and thank and you. And you know we had a we had, it, we had a uh, our free busing program where 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 we had a it's a picture of it on the it was mm-hmm. back here. Come it's and share for here. a minute. Yeah. Okay. Wow. There it is. Okay. See that Greyhound bus? Oh wow. It was different. Uh, uh, Lucy Montgomery, who was a member of the Montgomery Ward family. Mm-hmm. She went and got that bus for us. Montgomery took, Ward, like the department store? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. She went and got, we went and got mm-hmm. that bus. We took the, 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 the Grand Hound off and put the Panther on it. And we ran that bus for two years up and down the state, taking, pe- taking the, uh, the people to the to different prisons. And we had a schedule. Every, mm-hmm. every other week it was going somewhere. So uh, people would come from Chicago to East St. Louis. And people from mm-hmm. St. Louis who maybe had to go, go, go to a particular prison in Illinois, they mm-hmm. would come over to the office. And it was, this was all done free. We would ask, you know, if you had a donation, you want to mm-hmm. give, give it, blah, blah, blah. But outside of that, we, we didn't turn down nobody. nobody well, let me else. ask you this, because right now St. Louis is going through it. Like, really, how, how do we get to a point where we can get the community more involved and in, in not just the, you know, running for office and voting, but in actually, like, rolling up their sleeves and, you know, putting in the work and, and, and putting on our capes and saving ourselves? I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you. This, this is this, this is uh, no, no BS. I have struggled with it. And I have struggled with it. I don't really know what else we can do except for the fact of, I guess people continue to be more oppressed, mm-hmm. or more downtrodden. Maybe at some point they will be like a, like to say, the junkyard dog when you put your back up mm-hmm. against the wall. You know, they, they'll, they'll make a move like that. Uh, and I, I, and I. I I've been criticized for saying this, but I, I feel sometimes that uh, uh, there's going to have to be, like I said, I'm going to get criticized. Mm-hmm. There's going to be some, a couple, maybe a couple of generations of people are going to have to pass in order to, to for, for these young people to, mm-hmm. to, to get that knowledge that they're thirsty for. Because, to give an example, there's a lot of people, I'm, I'm 67 years old, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that, that my age and stuff who know stuff. Mm-hmm. They've been through stuff, and they know better, but they will not share it. For whatever reasons, I think some of the reasons are jealousy. Mm-hmm. Some of the reasons, uh, I'm tempted to say stupidity. I shouldn't say it, but, you know, all, all these type of things. I think once they kind of make that transition, then, mm-hmm. then uh, uh, they won't hold back some of the younger people that's out here. You know, because we, we were talking the other day about uh, investments within the, within the black and poor community. You and I both know there's people out here who do even though mm-hmm. our communities are down trying, there's people out here do have capital, access mm-hmm. to capital, but they won't share it. They won't even give the young people that the knowledge mm-hmm. to try to come up themselves. And I, I just feel that maybe with the combination of them, them getting off the scene and the repression continuing, that people mm-hmm. will finally, they will finally, uh, 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 they, you know, they get it. It's just like when I, I remember when I first time I saw a Black Panther newspaper, I was in high school in 1970. It was like somebody took something and hit me upside my head because it was like a light bulb went off of my head. Mm-hmm. And I was able, after I read that paper and started investigating, you know, because see, the, the youth now as a whole, they don't investigate, they don't read like, mm-hmm. really like they should. Like they should. Uh, and start asking questions. Ask, ask, ask your, your grandparents and, mm-hmm. and people like questions. You'd be amazed. And that, that's, I still believe they will start connecting those dots. Okay. And I'm gonna, I got to say this. Okay. Brothers, 
them bitches and them hoes that you like, you, them words y'all like to throw mm -hmm. out so lightly, that is some of the most disrespectful, counter-revolutionary thing I've ever heard in my life. Here it is, this year, 16, I mean, yeah, in 2019, to be exactly 400 years that we have been here as, as slaves and Africans in, 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 in this country. And black women have sustained us throughout, through, throughout centuries trying to perpetuate our race. In the Black Panther Party, which is which is which not normally acknowledged, 60 to 7 percent of the members were women. Women ran things. They they gave us our marching order. It was women, and they are not acknowledged at all. And we should. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Lots of jewels. Lots of.